The mount found world tour is back again and this time we're going to take a look at the mounts found in Draenor and if you've missed the previous world tour episodes there will be a link to a playlist in the description below. Click that playlist that will show you all the other continents we've covered and all the mounts found within those continents so worth checking out if you're newer to mount collecting. And our first stop is going to be your garrison. This was one of the main features of Warlords of Draenor and thus has a lot of mounts locked behind it. And if you haven't set this up before, I would recommend getting yours to level 3 before you get going with anything else. For that, you want to go to either Orgrimmar or Stonewind and pick up the kind of intro Warlords of Draenor quests. Go through that, that will take you to like Blasted Lands and Tanan Jungle and then to Frostfire Rage's Horde or Shadowmoon Valley as Alliance. You could make your own way there if you want to without doing that intro quest line. I wouldn't recommend it though. It's going to be an absolute pain without flying unless someone's going to help you out. Either way, get your garrison set up, go through the quest line. And eventually you'll be given a level 1 garrison. That's no good to us really though. So continue following that quest line and eventually you'll get a quest to upgrade it to level 2. From there you'll need gold and garrison resources. Resources can be obtained from an item you can buy off the auction house called the Ogre Cache I think it's called. Generally how I do it, you just buy a bunch of those. It's going to give you a thousand resources per one so pretty easy way of doing it. Alternatively you can go around drain all looting treasures. So those will give you resources. And a pretty good yield is from Tanan Jungle, these like Radiate and Apexus Crystals. Uh, these are pretty much farmable, you just run around looting those over and over again. They don't give much, but you can keep doing it until you've got the amount you need. But Ogre Cash is going to be your best bet if you've got the gold to spend. Either way, get your garrison to level 3, and then from there we can kind of get going with things. The first garrison thing we're going to talk about is the garrison invasion slash bosses. And these are events that will happen, kind of assaults that will happen on your garrison. And from those you'll have a chance of getting one of four mounts, or maybe even more if you look at, but the Garn Steelmore, the Giant Cold Snout, the Shadow Hide Pearl Tusk, and the Smoky Direwolf. All four of these are on about a 1% drop chance, but you will have multiple chances per week per character at getting one of these. So to get a Garrison Invasion started, you will need at least a level 2 Garrison, but some people do say it's kind of weird with level 2, so I would recommend having a level 3 anyway, if you're going to need that for later on stuff. And you'll want to head over to Sergeant Crawler if you're Horde or Sergeant Grimjaw if you're Alliance and pick up a Scouting Missive. I would recommend picking up one that's closest to your garrison just so it's quicker. Head out, complete that, head back to your garrison and then you should have a quest to start a garrison assault. Uh, speak to the NPC and then they'll have a little box saying hey are you ready to defend your garrison? Click yeah. And then you'll have waves of mobs to defend from your garrison and there'll be a point system all the way up to 1.3k+. plus. And there'll be different tiers, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Bronze and silver don't give you anything mount related. Gold and platinum do though. Each gold will give you a bag and platinum will also give you a bag. So you want to make sure you are hitting the 1.3k at least. Which is very easily done as a 120 character. You can literally just AFK and your NPCs will handle it all for you. If you're lower level though you will need to do some work and be running around and killing as much stuff as possible. There is also a small chance after completing an invasion to get an item that will summon a boss which is going to be an additional chance at getting the mount every week but those are extremely rare i don't think i've ever seen one myself but you can join other people's groups if they have one up and kill their garrison boss for that extra chance the next garrison thing we're going to talk about is the stables this is a building you can plop down in your garrison and right off the bat with a level one stables you'll be able to start picking up the dailies and these dailies will be to either go and capture some kind of beast, up to six of them you'll have in total, or train the beast that you already have. So day one you're always going to be capturing a beast, which will be either a Talbuk or a Cleft Hoof, depending on your faction. Once you have that, you'll come back the next day and you'll probably have to go capture a new one and then train the previous one. And that'll just be to mount up on it and then defeat something in combat. Fairly straightforward. So from the initial dailies, it'll take about two weeks, you're going to get six mounts. The trained Snarler, the trained Silver Pelt, the trained river wallow, the trained rock tusk, the trained meadow stumper, and the trained ice hoof. But you'll want to upgrade your stables to level 2 and 3, and the reasoning behind that is you're going to get items that will be in the stables that you can put in your bags, and these will make your mounts weaker, but as you defeat the enemies within Nagrand for your mount training, you'll be progressing towards an achievement, and once you complete the achievement for all of your kind of mounts, and you'll gain an additional two mounts, one from each achievement, and that'll be the Armored Frost Wolf and the Armored Frost Boar. So definitely worth doing because at the end of the day, after about two weeks, you'll have eight mounts, and the dailies don't take very long at all, so it's a pretty good yield for the time that it takes. 
The next garrison thing we're going to talk about is the fishing shack and from this you're going to get the crimson water strider as the main objective but there are other things we can get with it as well which we'll talk about a bit later on. So for this we will need a level 3 fishing shack so go and unlock your level 1 fishing shack, do the quest line, upgrade it to level 2 and then from there you want to head out into Draenor and fish up these enormous fish. You'll need to fish up 100 of each type to travel to all the different zones and then you'll be working towards the Draenor Angler achievement. Once you've done that achievement, you will unlock the Fishing Shack level 3, and you can plop down your Fishing Shack level 3, which will allow you to go on a quest chain to unlock Nat Peggle, bring him to your garrison. And this guy is good for a couple of reasons. First of all, he's going to sell us the Crimson Water Strider, so we need him there. But we can also attach him to our Fishing Shack. You can put him in, in there as a worker, and that will allow you to fish up these Lunkers without bait. And Lunkers are what we need to hand into Nat Pagel to increase his reputation with us, which we're going to need for the mount. And then he's also going to give us a, a lucky coin for getting these Lunkers too. So very, very important. And from there, it's basically just go and pick somewhere and farm away. Keep farming Lunkers all day long until you have enough Lunkers to get to his best friend rank and have enough coins to purchase the stuff that you want to purchase. The other thing we can do in the garrison with the level 3 fishing shack is if you fish in your garrison itself, then you have a chance of fishing up a Lunafall Carp if you're Alliance, or a Frost Deep Minnow if you're Horde, and this will summon a mob, a little Murloc, you'll kill the Murloc, and that will have a chance, a very very tiny chance, of dropping a Sea Turtle or a Riding Turtle. If you can, try and find a group that's doing this, because you can loot other people's mobs that they kill, so the more people you have trying to do this, the better your odds are going to be, because you're going to be getting more of these Murlocs killed, giving you a better chance of looting the mount, so do it in a group is the best bet. The next garrison thing on our list is going to be the trading post. This is another building that you're going to want to get down in your garrison, and then you want to upgrade it to level 2. And once it's level 2, you'll unlock the faction Laughing Skull Orcs for Horde, which Exalted will allow you to get the Ironside Warwolf, or for Alliance it will give you the Shatari Defensive, which will allow you to purchase the Armored Iron Tusk Exalted. And these reps are just straightforward rep grinds, like mob grinds, there's no weird stuff to it, you literally just pick a location that gives rep, and grind the mobs over and over again until you hit exalted. The horde, that's going to be the pit in Gorgrund. There's going to be a juicy bit in the middle where there's a ton of mobs, unfortunately they do not give reputation, instead it's kind of the mobs all around the upper outer section. But there's a ton of elites there that are going to give you about 15 rep per kill, and the rares will give you 50 rep as well in that area. So worth killing those. Also as Horde, you could farm over in the Everbloom to the right-hand side of Gorgrund. I don't like that as much, but it's not that big of a difference. It's just personal preference, really. For Alliance, you'll want to head over to Talador, and you'll find Shatraf Sitter. And then just left-ish of the main bit of Shatraf Sitter, you'll find all the elites and stuff in that section. And that's mostly where you'll want to be. But just keep grinding mobs until you do hit Exalted. The other reason the trading post is really, really useful to us is you can upgrade it to level 3 once you have one exalted Draenor faction. So you won't either want to do the Laughing Skull slash Shatari defensive, or there's going to be another rep we'll talk about in a little bit called the Steam Wieldle Preservation, which is a very easy rep to get to exalted. And that will allow you to unlock the level 3 trading post. Once you have a level 3 trading post, all other rep gains in Draenor are going to be increased by 20%. So that should be one of your first objectives is to get that to level 3 because that's going to give you rep increases with everything else we do, just saving you some time in the long run, but it's up to you. Continuing with the garrison stuff, the next thing is when your garrison is level 3, within the kind of main hall, your town hall, you'll be able to head in there and you'll find a trader NPC. Speaking to that NPC will give you the option to buy two mounts, you'll be able to buy the Rock Tusk Battle Football for 10,000 gold, or the Witherhide Cliff Stomper for 20,000 gold. So not that expensive, really. And there's two more mounts that you can add to your collection very, very easily. The next thing is also in your town hall, and that is going to be the mission table. And from the mission table, you can unlock a rare mission called uh, Breaker 2, which will award you with the Cold Fist Gronlin mount. But this mount is a BOE mount, and from on most servers, it goes for less than 5,000 gold. And to unlock the requirements to even get this mission is a bit of a pain. So honestly, I would say it's worth just buying it from the auction house if you do want the mount. But if you're interested in unlocking the mission yourself, then what you'll need is, these are the old requirements, I don't know if these still stand up today, but you'll need three followers at 675 eye level, 
7 followers at 645 eye level, and then you'll also need 15 active level 100 followers. Now, the NPC we spoke to a minute ago, the, the trader guy, will sell you some follower gear that will get them up to 645, I believe. So that's your first entry step to getting your followers ready to go. And to get yourself the garrison followers, you'll just want to complete missions and the, find all the secrets and stuff across Draenor. You can also put down the inn building, and that, once upgraded, will allow you to uh, recruit followers directly to your garrison. So that's an easy way of getting your followers, but it is a lot of work. Not really worth the time, in my opinion. The only thing that does make it worth the time is it also has a chance of giving you a mission, which will award Halab battle tokens, and those can be used to purchase the Outland mounts, uh, the Reigns of the Dark War Talbuk, and the Reigns of the Dark Riding Talbuk, and it's probably the easiest way of getting those two mounts in particular. But whether it's worth the hassle for the Gronlin, I would say no. Only a few things left to do in the garrison now, and this one isn't directly related, but it just felt kind of better putting it in this section of the guide, and that is the Frostwolf Orc rep for Horde, or the Council of Exarchs for Alliance. And this is a straightforward rep where you just go and kill mobs and gain reputation, but you can also do the quest lines within Frostfire Ridge for Horde, or Shadow Moon Valley for Alliance, and those will give you a good chunk of rep too. If you're looking to complete the storylines, etc., it's worth it. But for Horde, you'll want to head over to Dagamore in Frostfire Ridge, Magnarok in Frostfire Ridge, or Iron Siege Works. And for Alliance, you'll want to head over to Shadow Moon Valley, and there you'll find Pillars of Fate off to the left side of the zone, Sokrathar's Rise, or Dark Tired Roost. All these areas will have mobs that you can grind for reputation. I would also recommend picking up a missive before you head out, Vendor we talked about earlier on, because completing that missive will give you a good chunk of Apexis crystals, and those are going to be a useful resource for purchasing the mounts. And you'll need a lot of them, so it's worth tr trying to get as much as you can early on, as it's going to make the Apexis grind easier later. Once you are exalted, you can head over to your faction hub in Ashran, and for Alliance, you'll be able to purchase the Dusty Rock Hide, and for Horde, you'll be able to pick up the Swift Frostwolf. Those are going to cost you 5,000 ish gold and 5,000 Apexis crystals. So, when I was talking about the Apexis crystals a moment ago, you can see now you're going to need a lot of them at the end of the video. The final mount you're going to get from your garrison is the Mudback River Beast, and this is going to come from a shipyard mission. To unlock the shipyard in general, you will need a level 3 garrison. If you have a level 3 garrison, head inside your town hall and your major NPC in there will have a quest for you. So for Horde, that is Vol'jin. Now one thing I would recommend doing is clicking on the little spyglass on your minimap and turning on trivial quests. This will just mark the trivial quests on your map and stuff going to make things a ton easier for most of the stuff we talk about in this video, so I definitely recommend having that on. So follow that quest line, that'll send you off to find a shipwright, you'll help them out, and then you'll eventually end up back in your garrison again. You'll find a land for the shipyard to go, you plop that down, and you'll have a few more quests to do, and then eventually you'll have a quest that'll send you to Tanan Jungle. You need to do that to progress your shipyard, but you also need to do that to set up your base in Tanan Jungle anyway, so those two things are pretty damn important. So head off to Tanan Jungle, continue following the quest line, and then you'll have a quest that will send you to the Iron Front within Tanan Jungle. You'll head all the way down there, you'll help out like Duratan, and then he'll send you off to talk to three different NPCs within Tanan Jungle. Now those NPCs will have additional quests for you that you don't need to do, you just need to go and speak to those NPCs, then you can head back to your base in Tanan Jungle, and then you'll be sent back to your shipyard at your garrison. So once there, you'll be able to continue doing the quest, and you'll eventually get like a, an overall quest to upgrade your thing to level 2. But to do that, you'll need to send off so many missions and get gold and resources. So you'll just need to be consistently sending off missions. Get your shipyard upgraded to level 2. And then keep an eye out for a rare mission called It's a Boat, It's a Plane, It's Just a River Beast. You'll want to have pretty good ships ready for that because it isn't easy. But, you know, keep an eye out and eventually you will see that mission. Then you'll have a chance at getting the Mudback River Beast. So now that we're finally done and free from our garrison, we can head out into the world and our first stop is going to be Frostfire Ridge. We're going to head over to the west side of Frostfire Ridge and there you'll find a, an elite wolf called Not Karosh. It's not got that long of a respawn timer, it's an elite mob and killing this will give you a 100% chance of getting the mount called the Garn Night Howl. Now this is a BOE mount so you could sell it or buy it, but at this point because of how trivial it is to kill and its respawn timer, Generally, these go for a few hundred gold at most. Either way, a very easy mount for you to add to your collection if you don't already have it. 
Next up in Frostfire Ridge is the rare spawn called Gorok, and killing this will give you a 100% chance of getting the Great Grey Tusk mount. And this mob is on about a 5 to 16 hour respawn timer, so it's not too crazy, uh, but you will be waiting some time and you'll have to have a, you know, a little bit of luck on your side. Now this does have 5 respawn locations, which I've marked on the map now, and you just want to be checking those. If you don't have flying, then maybe ignore the one that's off to the far left, because that's going to be a bit of a pain to get to, and just focus on the 4 that are kind of in the middle of the zone. But either way, pick what's best for you, keep camping it, and eventually you will get yourself that Great Great Tusk mount. The next stop on our world tour is going to be Gorgrond, and the first thing here is going to be a rare called Pound Fist. This guy has five spawn locations similar to Gorok, and those will be marked on the map now, and its respawn timer is about 6 to 12 hours, but that's still a little bit unclear due to it having its respawn timer nerfed. It used to be like 48 hours plus, but either way, it's been brought to be online with things like Gorok, so it shouldn't be too bad. Now, one thing I would recommend doing is joining communities like the Secret Finding Discord, being nice there and giving back when you can but you can also set yourself up to be alerted when things like this spawn and people invite you to the group and they'll help you get some of these longer rares so it's definitely worth it if you've not got too much time to sit and camp. Now killing this will give you a 100% chance of getting the Sunhide Gronlin which isn't too bad of a mount I do like the Gronlin mounts. Our final stop in Gorgrund is going to be Blackrock Foundry which is a raid and you'll want to head to the north of the zone it's a big build and you can't really miss it. And you'll want to make sure you are on Mythic difficulty from this because killing the end boss Black Hand on Mythic will give you around a 1% chance of getting the Iron Hoof Destroyer, which is a really, really nice mount. Now, most of this raid is pretty straightforward as a 120 character, so I'm not going to go through all of the bosses. But a few things I do want to mention. First of all, after you kill the Iron Maidens, there'll be kind of these crates to the right hand side. And if you follow that trail around, there'll be an NPC right at the back that will give you a quest. And completing these quest objectives, which is basically to clear the raid four times on Mythic, you'll be able to hand that in for a skip that will allow you to skip straight to the last boss. So this is going to be great for farming the raid with you know, much more efficiency and speed later down the line. The other thing to note as well is the Ore Gorger. You need to kill all of the trash in its room to be able to activate the boss. And then the Blast Furnace, you'll need to basically kill the engineers near this like furnace panels on the left and right. And then you'll be able to click the bags and use your extra action button on the furnace plates to blow them up. You need to keep doing that until the plates both explode. You have to go on one side, kill them, go the other side and kill them. And one thing to note is the engineers will try to repair them. So, you know, try and stop them from doing that. Once those are dead, the main, the, a bunch of these elementalists will spawn. You can kill those and then you can kill the main boss. And then eventually you'll kill all of the bosses in the raid. You'll head back to the middle section, basically where you entered the raid you'll be able to head up to Black Hand. The only thing to note on Black Hand is he'll do a kind of knockback in his second phase. And if you're not in the right spot, that can knock you onto the platforms and cause the boss to despawn. And then in phase three, you want to be making sure you're in the middle of the platform so you don't get knocked off. But kill Black Hand each week for that 1% chance of getting the Iron Hoof Destroyer. Our next stop is going to be Talador, and we don't have a whole lot to do here, just one rare spawn called Sylphide. It's going to be a big river beast, and that's going to work similar to Gorok. It's going to have five spawn locations, which you'll see on the map now. And it has a slightly long respawn timer of about 12 to 28 hours, but kill that, and you'll have a 100% chance of getting the Sapphire River Beast mount. So Talador out of the way, our next stop is going to be Nagrand, and we have a few things to do here at least. The first up is going to be a rare spawn called Look Hawk, and that is going to have five spawn locations, which will be marked now. And this will have a similar respawn to Sylphide of 12 to 28 hours, and killing this will give you a 100% chance of getting the Mottled Meadow Stomper. We also have an additional rare spawn to kill in Nagrand as well, that's called Nack the Thunderer, Big Cleft Hoof. And that will have five spawn locations too, once again marked on the map now. And this one will have a slightly longer respawn than the rest, and that's going to be 15 to 28 hour respawn. But same as the other ones, kill this and you'll have a 100% chance of getting the Blood Hoof full. The final thing for us to do in Nagrand is a rep grind with the faction Steam Weedle Preservation. And this is one of the easier rep grinds to do in Draenor. Getting to Exalted will allow you to purchase the Domesticated Razorback from Ashram. 
And there's a few ways of getting wrapped with this faction. First of all is finding these caches, which you'll mainly find on the northwest side of the zone. And inside those, you'll find Gorian artifacts, which you can turn 20 in for 250 rep. High Mall relics, which you can turn in one for 350 rep. And these are bind on account. And there's also a bunch of mobs on the west side of the zone that you can kill for these two items as well. So you can continuously grind those out. There's also a, a, an additional method of gaining rep. And these are nine elite beasts within the zone. I'll have a map up now showing you where they're all marked. And killing these will give you a 100% chance of getting like a fang or a horn or a tusk, whatever. Which you can hand in back at the base in Nagrand for an additional 500 rep each. These are also bind on account. So you can make use of other realms, etc. to farm these out. Send them over to your main character and get those a little bit quicker. I'm not too sure on the respawn time of these nine rares. I think it's around an hour-ish. So you'll want to be doing other stuff while you are waiting for them to respawn again. But it is definitely worth flying around first of all, looking for these, getting the nine kills, and getting that big burst of 500 rep per hand in. And keep doing that until you hit Exalted. The next place on our world tour is going to be the Spires of Iraq. And the first thing for us to do here is another rep grind with the faction Arakoa Outcast. Now, the second you enter Spires of Iraq, if you've never done the quest line here before, You'll find a quest line with an Arakoa, and following that around the zone will give you additional rep with the Arakoa. So if you want to do the quest line, complete the story in the zone, then that is a good chunk of rep from that. But if you don't want to do that, the other alternative is to mob grind, which you'll have to do eventually anyway, because the quest line will not get you too exalted. To grind rep with the faction, there's two different places within Spires of Iraq. The first is going to be just north of the Howling Crag. You'll find a bunch of mobs up there, and you'll be able to kill those for rep. Or well, the main one that people do is to the right of Sethic Hollow. It's kind of like the bit in the water with all the fungal and uh, mushroom stuff going on on the map. You can head there and that is generally pretty good to farm because there's good mob packs that you can mow down and grind and AoE and all that good jazz. And keep doing that until you hit Exalted. And getting Exalted with these guys will allow you to purchase the Shadow Main Charger mount. The final thing for us to do in Spires of Iraq is to kill the World Boss Rukmar. This is going to spawn quite near the dungeon where you'll see me on the screen and on the map now. It's going to spawn up here and you'll be able to get a hit on it. And then killing it will give you around a 0.2% chance of getting the Solar Spirehawk mount. Now this is a world boss so you can only kill it once per week per character. And it's also not bonus rollable for the mount. So using a bonus roll is a waste of time if the mount is your main objective. But keep killing that and good luck getting the mount because it is a, a rare one. Our next destination is going to be Shadow Moon Valley, and we don't have a whole lot to do here. We have another rare spawn to kill called Pathrunner. This is going to have a few more spots to, to find it at. It's going to have six total, and its respawn timer is going to be about five to 16 hours, but there'll be a map up now showing you its respawn spots. And then if you're able to find it, killing it will give you a 100% chance at getting the Swift Breeze Strider, like all the other rares we've talked about so far in the video. The next destination is going to be to Nan Jungle, assuming you've set up your faction base there, which we, we did early in the video with the shipyard. With that, you'll be good to go. And the first faction we're going to talk about is the Saber Stalkers. So on the right side of the zone, you'll find an area called Fangrilla. And you'll also find a bunch of Saberons there that you can kill. Killing these will give you 25 rep per kill. And additional, you'll get a few of these Black Fang Claws as well. And these are very useful, so keep hold of them. And from this faction, from Honored, you're going to be able to buy the Wild Gortusk, which will require Honored, but also a thousand of those Black Fang Claws. And then at Exalted, you'll be able to buy the Bristling Hellbore, which will cost you 5,000 of those Black Fang Claws. And honestly, getting to Exalted isn't the hard part. It's going to be getting these 6,000 Black Fang Claws that you need for the hand-ins. So that's your main way of getting rep, is going to be killing these mobs for 25 rep will also be a weekly quest that you can get just to the left side of Frangrilla. There'll be an NPC there and they'll want you to throw down these banners. And the banners do have a bit of a cooldown. So I would recommend throwing down one, killing the mob and then going grinding the mobs while you wait. And handing this in will give you 3.5k rep. So a good chunk of rep. Also in your faction hub, a horde, there'll be an NPC called Mimi uh, Brightcastle. And for Alliance, that'll be Parvink. And they'll have a chance of giving you a quest. It's random, you might get it one day, you might get it a week later. But that'll give you an additional 1.5k rep with the Saber Stalkers as well. And you just want to be looking out for those daily quests or weekly quests. 
and outside of that just grinding the mobs until you get the rep and the black fang claws. The next faction we're going to talk about is the main one for Horde and Alliance and that's going to be the Vol'jin Headhunters for Horde and the Hand of the Prophet for Alliance. And getting this up to Exalted will allow you to purchase the Death Tusk Felbor which isn't too bad of a looking mount. And to get this to Exalted unfortunately it's only daily quests. So from the, your main faction hub in Tanan, you'll have a main daily quest, you'll go out, hand that in, and then that'll unlock a two more daily quests for you to do. And then there's also a chance of getting a fourth from Nimi or Parvink, the NPC we talked about earlier. And that'll give you about 1.5k rep per day. So you're not going to be getting too much, it's roughly a k-ish or so a day. So not a whole lot, but there will also be main story quests that'll pop up like yellow quests. You want to be making sure you're doing those as well because they're going to give you a nice little chunk too that'll add on top but yeah the, either way this is going to take you a good few days to get this one done next up is the faction the order of the awakened and you need to get this faction to friendly which will take you about two days you'll find their main quest in your faction hub and then every day you'll get a daily for 1.5k rep but the downside is you'll need 150k apexus crystals to purchase the corrupted dreadwing from them when you are friendly. It's a very cool looking mount, but getting 150k Apexus Crystals is not going to be easy. What people generally do is they'll do all of their dailies and assaults within Tanan Jungle. That gives a good amount every day. So if you're doing this alongside your Vol'jin Headhunters slash Panda Prophet dailies, then you're going to end up with pretty much the amount you need by the time you're exalted with Vol'jin Headhunters. The other thing people do is they'll go and do their Saber Stalkers weekly. And that will give you a buff that will increase your apexic gains from mobs within Tanan Jungle. And they'll go and farm for a bit in Throne of Kill Jaden. Because those mobs give a decent yield per kill. It's like 30 to 50. So you can end up with a good amount per hour if you farm up there too. Also your missives that we talked about earlier in the video will be giving you a nice little chunk as well. So just keep repeating those things until you are up to 150k. Next up are four rares within Tanan Jungle. These can be killed once per day. They have about a one to three hour respawn and killing them will have about a 10% chance of dropping a rattling iron cage. And the rattling iron cage will guaranteed give one of three mounts, either the Tundra Ice Hoof, the Warsung Diafang or the Armored Razorback. Now you can get duplicates unfortunately, but at least you do get a guaranteed mount. You can kill four, all four once per day, so you do have four chances per day of getting a rattling cage. And they are a little bit tough to kill because they do announce that they're alive and then they'll be killed within seconds. So you really have to be ready for them. Now, additionally though, they have a chance of dropping an item called the Medallion of the Legion. And using this will give you a thousand reputation with pretty much every Draenor faction. So this is really, really good for increasing your rep gains. And these can also be bought off the auction house too. So if you've got a lot of gold to dump, you could just buy these and this is a much quicker way of getting rep with like Vol'jin Headhunters, etc. The final stop in Tanan is going to be the Raid Hellfire Citadel. And clearing this raid on Mythic Difficulty will give you a 1% chance of getting the Fell Steel Annihilator. That's going to come from the last boss of the Raid Archimond. And head to the raid, it's in the middle of the zone. Make sure you are on Raid Difficulty Mythic. And then head inside and honestly the first boss is the only one that really poses any kind of challenge and since that was nerfed it's way easier now just make sure you're proactively clearing the sides as best as you can and get the mobs off the left and right cannon and deliver the crates to the cannons as much as you can and eventually you'll be done with the fight it's really really easy now the rest of the bosses don't really stand out to me as difficult and uh, there's not one that comes to mind that i feel like i need to give extra explanation for so just clear through the raid you will also get a quest from Khadgar that will allow you to clear the raid four times. And then once you're done with that, you'll be able to skip, which makes the, the future clears much, much faster. So keep killing Archimonde each week until you do get your mount, which is, might take you a while, but good luck. Next up, we're going to head over to Ashran. And first of all, I'm going to talk about the PvP instanced Ashran, the epic battleground that you can queue up for. Because heading in there and handing in the artifacts that you can find on the PvE mobs on the left hand side of the, the instance, you'll be able to hand those in for 5 for 25 rep per 5 that you hand in. And that's going to give you rep towards Vol'jin Spear or Rin's Vanguard. Getting these to Exalted will allow you to purchase the Breeze Strider Stallion for Horde and the Pale Thorn Grazer for Alliance. This is going to be a very very long rep grind though. 
Uh, it's going to take you a very, very long time. You're just going to have to keep doing Ashren, killing the mobs, looting the kind of purple goodies, and getting as many artifacts as you can until you do eventually one day hit Exalted. Unfortunately, the medallions of the Legion don't work for this rep. There's no time walking badges, so it's just going to be a big old slog. Next up, we're going to look at the normal Ashran, the non-instance one, just your faction hub. And from there, you'll be able to purchase the Horde or Alliance um, faction mounts, for like the Frostwolf Forks, etc. There'll be a vendor there for that. There'll also be the vendor for the Spires of Iraq rep, and also the Steam Weedle Preservation. And then additionally, there will be a Dawn Seeker Alk set that you'll be able to find that will sell you the Moss Hide River Wallow for 50k gold plus 5,000 Pexus Crystals. The final thing to talk about in Ashran is when time walking for Warlords of Draenor is active, you'll be able to purchase the Beast Lord's Iron Tusk for 5,000 time warp badges, or the Beast Lord's War Wolf for 5,000 as well, and you've, you've got to get the War Wolf, that one looks way better if you get the other one, you crazy. And also, you'll be able to purchase rep tokens that will give you 300 rep for 50 time warp badges as well. These are BOA, so you could buy them on your ults and send them over to your main. And these will give you rep with the vast majority of factions, just not the Ashram one we talked about a moment ago. The last few things take place across all of the zones in Draenor. And the first one is going to be a mount called the Void Talon of the Dark Star. This is a 100% drop chance when you find it. But finding it is the tough part. So you'll find a purple portal. These portals can spawn across pretty much every zone apart from Tanan Jungle and Ashran. And it'll be a purple portal that'll pop up. You'll click the portal, you'll head inside, and there'll be an egg on the ground that will have the mount guaranteed. The hard part is finding these portals. A portal could spawn in two different zones at the same time, but you can't find two portals in the same zone. And once someone finds the portal, it could be upwards of 10 hours for another one to spawn. And if no one finds it within kind of 15 minutes, the portal will despawn and it's going to be at least another two hours before the portal comes back again in that zone. So as you can tell, it's going to be quite rough to find these portals. So it's up to you. You can either park in one zone and keep checking the, the various spawn locations, which I'll have spawn locations popping up now on the screen. Or you can fly around the whole of Draenor and hope that you can find one of the portals. Either way, it's going to be kind of rough, so good luck. Next up to talk about is the Draenor Pathfinder, which completing this will give you the Soaring Sky Terror Mount and also flying in Draenor. And I have a separate guide for that that will be linked in the description below. But basically you need to complete the Draenor Pathfinder achievement, which is to explore all the zones. It's to do the major quest lines in each of the zones. It's to get exalted with factions like, or at least revered, sorry, with factions like Vulcan's Headhunters. And you'll also need to do all of the missives and find a crap ton of treasures so if you want more detail on that as i said there will be a link to that in the description below the final thing i wanted to touch on was the glory of the raider slash dungeon achievements people normally say when i leave these out oh you missed this but generally i leave them out on purpose because they don't quite make sense and um, but i'll touch on them real quick first of all the glory of the dungeon drain or hero which is the dungeon one that's completely soloable but not all of the dungeons are located within drain I'll have a link to a guide that I made in the past that will show you how to do all those achievements. Then we have the glory of the Drano Raider. And those raids are located in Drano, but they're not completely soloable. You will need a good sized raid to get that done. Getting that done though will give you the Gorse Strider Gronlin. And then finally we have the glory of the Hellfire Raider. Once again, not completely soloable. And getting all that done will give you the Infernal Direwolf. So that does bring us to an end of our Wad World Tour. You stuck this far, nice one. You, you slugged through the quite long video. I wanted to try and squeeze it all into one video if possible, and we just about made that happen. But outside of that, look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.